Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we're going to do a live edit, live in air quotes, because I'm not streaming this, but what I am doing is taking a photo that I've never worked on in my library. We start recording and I go through the edit from beginning to end. I usually do this as part of uh, an in the field in post combo, but uh, if you watched my previous video, you know I haven't been out in the field recently, still uh, nursing an ankle back to health. So I'd gone through my backlog, I found a photo here, haven't done a live edit in a while, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dive right into it. This is the image we're gonna work on, uh, the Chapel Bridge in Lucerne, Switzerland, the blue hour. Uh, I didn't have a lot of color going on in the sky other than blue, but I, I really like the scene. Uh, I found the photo going through the backlog, want to get to work on it. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, my, my general workflow here is I'll, I'll, I'll do some cropping first and whoop, wrong button there. And I think I'll do a 16 by nine on this because I, I don't need a lot of that, that sky. I mean, this does need to be about the, uh, the bridge. I'm going to trim in here. I'm getting rid of that distraction. And I think I'll just tighten in on the restaurant a little bit something like that. I'm pressing the L key once. It just kind of dims everything else in Lightroom so I get a good idea of what I'm looking at. I like that. Hitting enter and the L key two more times to cycle through back to getting the interface here. Let's get on to basics. I'm going with the landscape profile. That is my preferred one. And we hit auto. Okay, things are already looking better. Uh, quick assessment here. I, I don't mind as, as much as this um, this covered bridge is looking yellowish. That is the tone of the wood. So, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to try to downplay that too much. Uh, I do want more brightness in the buildings, and I certainly want those to be crisper. Uh, and of course, the, 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 you know, the spire, the, the tower on the chapel bridge itself, wanting that to be more prominent. Something that happens to me, at least with, with auto, is the contrast slider often just doesn't get touched very much. I'm going to push this far and then start to pull it back. Just increasing that a little bit more. Uh, clarity, I, I like what it's doing for the buildings and I don't like what it's doing for the rest of the scene. Well, a little bit. I'll take a little global clarity. Already making the mental note. I'm probably going into on one with this photo after Lightroom to give the architecture uh, you know, a pop with dynamic contrast. So that thought's already going through my mind. And I guess I'll do the same with a little bit of texture. Uh, other things I should check for because there's a lot of smooth parts to this photo. What I mean by like a uniform sky, uniform reflection in, uh, in the lake here. Well, I guess actually this part was part of the river. The lake's a little bit down from here. But uh, in any event, I'm hitting the Q key. A to show me little bits and spots. And I see a few things here, like these little things. I don't even need the content aware. Simple retouch is fine. These little things that might be construed as spots, we'll just take care of those. And um, I'm pressing the T key so you can see the toolbar. This is the visualized spots I'm talking about. Toggling that off and on with the letter A key. Uh, and I'll hit Q again and go back. So we're we're looking good here. I'm going to revisit the crop a little bit. I feel a little bit cramped up on that top side. I don't need as much of the reflection. Let's play with this. Let's play with this a little bit. Um, I guess I do really want the symmetry. So we'll, we'll pull down some. And the 16 by 9 may not be, may not be enough for me. So we'll just unlock and we'll go with a crop. I'm hitting L key again. Go with a crop that just suits the photo. I am not going to be uh, constrained by an aspect ratio. That's not the important part. The important part's the photo. All right, this feels pretty darn nice already. Let's get my controls back visible a couple of L keys later. Uh, I mentioned I want to get a little more brightness into this area of the buildings and the, the the chapel itself. I think how I'll do this is I'll, I'll do my uh, kind of like exposure balancing here in Lightroom and then I want to treat that architecture uh, in another tool uh, in, in effects with uh, certainly with dynamic contrast. So we'll do some local masking. The, 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 the little chapel spire, that'd be an easy, easy masking job for Lightroom. Object, give me that. 
and let's start with, say, bring the shadows up a little bit. I'll push it far so we can see what's going on. And just, you know, just a touch, just this little bit, so I can get a little more brightness before and after. One more time, before, after, just enough so I can see that. Let's try that same approach. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's add a second object to this same mask, because that same level of control should be fine. And so if I grab this section, that should be found pretty well. If I hover, yeah, it did a good masking job. So that's good. Now let's see if that's enough of a pop there. That's enough. I don't want to go much farther than that. I'll experiment, oh, maybe, a, maybe a, a nudge on exposure. And I'm, I'm talking a nudge. I mean, I'll push it far. You see what's going on. That's getting a little, a little artificial to me. But those two things, before and after, just drawing a little more attention. And it still feels too strong. I'm going to use the, this global control here so I can just really fine tune the amount. And I'm watching the photo as I'm adjusting this. I'm almost just rocking my finger back and forth on a, a trackpad to see, you know, what do I like? And I'm ending up here, which ended up being, okay, 86. Um, 86 is the number of the day. <laughs> so uh, I think I, I'm happy with where the photo is now. And I want to do some finishing touches in, uh, in on one effects in particular. So uh, the way that I, I tend to work from Lightroom into other plugins is I bounce through Photoshop because I can leverage Photoshop's smart objects. And you know, the tools that I work with also work as you know, smart filters through Photoshop. That means re-editability. So you know, if I look at this photo in a week and go, yeah, I'd like to tweak one thing that I did in On One or Luminar or some other plugin, I can do that. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna bounce through Photoshop here. Uh, this will be less exciting, but it is part of the workflow. This is a live edit, so you know. So here we go. All right. So right clicking out on the photo, and I'll choose Edit In, and down toward the bottom, Edit as a Smart Object. As I mentioned, Smart Object will maintain all of the things that I've done in Lightroom. So if I make changes in Lightroom, of course, those would be reflected through. But also uh, the the advantage for me is being able to tweak and change things in the other plugins that I launched. So I'm just waiting for, for Photoshop here to finish loading the photo. Okay, it just came up, that's great. And um, this interesting little icon down there kind of shows that it's a smart object or a smart layer, uh, smart object. I get my terminology confused sometimes. I use a lot of software. Uh, in the filters area, this is where you know all my plugins are. And I'll launch this into effects now. So Photoshop is just an intermediary. There's nothing doing in Photoshop other than leveraging this uh, this smart technology so I can re-edit. And we'll get this back into uh, effects. All right, and we're in effects now. Let's uh, let's let's get that nice and big. And I want to add a filter. Now I want to see the architecture. Notice that you know the the mask AI. That's going to give me basically what I want. So I'll choose architecture and choose dynamic contrast. I'll let on one do the lifting for me on the masking because I don't need to crispen the rest of the scene. I just want it on the architecture before and after. That just that nice little pop. And I may even boost this a little bit. Let's experiment. Let's zoom in here and get a good, a good look what we have those medium details up a little more, large details. I'm also skimming around to make sure I don't introduce any halos. I don't want that to happen. Small is probably going to be a little bit too much. Maybe a nudge on that. Let's look at the rest of the scene here. We're not uh, not introducing any 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 artifacting there. That's good. Before and after. I really like what it's doing on the on the spire here, you'll notice the, the brickwork, right? That's really coming out. That's that's really nice. All right, um, I guess a final bit, and I'll do this here in effects since I'm here, um, is a vignette, but I really just want to vignette the lower part. So we'll add a vignette. And if you, <laughs> you're probably like, a, like, yeah, Scott, we know exactly what you're gonna do. We've seen you do vignettes and, and on one a million times. 
Well, you're, you're going to see it one more time. I always take the feather down to zero so I can see where the vignette is. In this case, I want to vignette the bottom part of the photo. So I'm kind of biasing the center point upward. And then we'll size it out some. Start raising the feather so we see it bleed in both directions. Let that fade out. That's nice and natural. And I don't want it on the top of the photo. So I will open the masking area. Here's my masking properties. I'll put that right down here. And I want a masking bug. I'll get the gradient and just drop it right about there. And what that just did is it masked it away from the top of the scene. You know, if I, if I view the mask, the vast mask looks very boring, right? There's nothing interesting about the mask. Say, don't have this filter applied up on top, only allowed on the bottom. Well, what did we do with the vignette? With the vignette, and I'll take my feather back down to zero for a minute, we vignetted the bottom half. And you can see now the top half, that same curve, that same curve you know, on the vignette coming around here, it's not there anymore, hidden by the mask. I will undo my, my feather adjustment, and then we get this nice little bottom part, you know, like a lower half vignette. And so the, the end result is, you know, before and after. I'm just pushing your eye up toward the architecture. That's where I want you to, want you to be. Um, anything else here? I think I'm, I'm going to be happy with this. Um, the thought that went through my head was, do I want to play around at all with um, like the reverse of a vignette, like an inner glow, something to, to brighten the, uh, the architecture itself? You know, but I'm looking at this and I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I like the feel of it. There is plenty of interest. It's, it's clear what the subject of the photo is. So I'm just going to hit the checkbox. This will go back over into Photoshop. I'll save it from Photoshop, you know, and I'll be done. So, you know, that's the, that's the live edit here. So uh, I'm going to let that, uh, let that finish here, and then we'll take a quick look at the before and after. And so here's the, here's the final results. This is the out-of-camera, unprocessed image, modulo the crop. I'm keeping the crop the same so you can see the comparisons here. We have, this was the original. These are the changes we did in Lightroom, and then the finishing touches in on one effect. So there we go. That's the that's the live edit, start to finish. I'm I'm happy with the photo. I hope you en enjoyed the the, the walk along uh, for the the live edit here. If you got other questions or you're like Scott, I, I would have tried this or did you think about that? You know, share them below. This is right now this 10 minutes of time I've spent on the photo. And if you're like me, uh, you know sometimes you go, hey, uh, you know that photo I worked on two or three days ago. I I, I think I want to go back and and try something else. You know, share your thoughts. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear how, uh, how you might interpret the photo. Uh, until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.